continue our research. It's not an end product. Sumagro is not an end product. It's just beginning. It's just beginning. A mother just hearing, listening from people about the performance of her baby outside the house. So, so for me, it's just a stepping stone. So just for all of you, you're all anxious to know about this product. But I know many of you know about this product. In spite of it, you want to know more about this product. So I will try my best. How? What made us to build up this fabulous product, which performs very well for a broad spectrum of crops? Because I was born and brought up, and I was graduated. I did my master's, everything in the agricultural university campus. There only I was raised up. So I know everything. The crop, I love it. The pest, I rare it. And many of the insects, I, I wish I like to catch them and then uh, process them. So the basic interest in agriculture made me to think more and more even after my PhD in uh, Belgium, I just wanted to go back to my home country and to see how best that I could work in the research lab in the university and make it available to the farmer. So the lab to land technology was sown in my mind. And that is what is the result of this Suagro because I tried my best and even now, my, with my team, with um, Nazar, Dr. Nazar Syed and then uh, Jenny's Revolt, both young scientists are two arms for me, and uh, they are all cooperating with me, and we are still continuing this research. Now, let us just uh, look at this one. So, this, everybody said, this is, the, this is a global problem that the population uh, is uh, increasing uh, day by day. So we have to do the best to increase the yield. It's not only the yield, the quality. And it's not only the quality, it should be sustainable, a sustainable agriculture. Now, this one, what I would like to show is, look at this. The Green Revolution was the first one that was introduced because there was a poverty and famine due to the uh, epidemics of many pests and diseases. So, so the first introduction was the Green Revolution, where the hybrid varieties have been introduced. The hybrid varieties, these hybrid varieties are lovers of heavy fertilizers and pesticides. When you put too much of fertilizer to the plant, to the soil, the plant grows very well, robust growth, but it attracts lots of insects and diseases as a result of which, again, the input of pesticide is increasing. So as a result of this, what is happening? We are killing the soil. We are making the soil unhealthy. So what happens? This is, this is what happens when you put uh, too much of, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, when you put uh, too much uh, fertilizer, it just spoils the earth, like loss of organic matter, which is something very important, loss of soil microorganisms, loss of topsoil, water pollution, depletion of soil minerals, and uh, the increased vulnerability to pest and diseases, as a result of which we use heavy pesticides, for example, insecticides and fungicides, so here, what you read is here, having stripped the soil of its richness, burned out the humus, and killed off the soil life, having turned much of the not so little corner of nature into a nutrient-depleted toxic wasteland, they are now developing Frankenstein's monster crops, GMOs, bred to live in these conditions. Can we count on this, like the GM? everywhere that is a transgenic crops but i do not have any negative anti uh, 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 th thinking at all about a biotech crop or biotechnology but what i'm saying we have to put several question marks here 
Will this work? Will this solve my problem? Like when you have a transgenic which is resistant to a viral disease, it becomes susceptible to a bacterial disease. It becomes susceptible to some other insects. When you have a Bt cotton, which is resistant to bollworm of cotton, but it becomes susceptible to the pink bollworm of cotton. So we have to be alert when we think of GM. So again, the pesticides. Pesticides really spoil the soil as well as the environment. That's what I'm saying. What pesticides do? The pesticides, they are designed to kill bugs that are harmful to plants. But the chemicals used in most pesticides can kill more than just garden pests. They can kill the helpful organisms that live in the soil. And uh, some of these chemicals can remain in the soil, that they will have a residual effect, a toxic effect. So what is next? We have to protect the mother earth. The mother earth, she should be healthy to get a healthy baby. So now this is the situation of our mother earth here. So, what is the best transition from these chemical monsters? The best transmission, tra 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 transfer, uh, this one transition is the a successful organic practice. That is where I enter as Sumagro. That's where our Sumagro formulation enters. Now, everyone is saying the Sumagro, oh, amazing results. Yesterday when I had, uh, when I was discussing with some people, they said, Oh, amazing results. So the amazing results, how did we get this formulation? What's the basis? What I'm going to tell you today is the scientific support what we had in the construction of this microbial formulation with multifunctional quality for a broad spectrum of crop. So when you see here, see the, uh, the main importance was given to the plants and then the roots. So, you know that for a healthy plant, there should be a healthy root. There is a healthy root, there is beneficial microorganisms in soil. So, there should be a soil. And uh, in the soil, the soil is very important where you get all the plant nutrients that are available in the soil. So, if you see this picture, we concentrated like this, plants, roots and then the soil and then the beneficial microorganisms because the roots they produce root exudates and uh, there is a chemical recognition and communication between the plant roots and the microbes and in the soil. So what is it? What are all the different aspects that we focused on? We focused on to the different uh, functionalities of these beneficial microorganisms like bioprotection, the plant growth promotion, nitrogen fixing, fixation, phosphate solubilization, potassium and mineral solubilization. All in total also the phytohormone production, that's the phytostimulation, that causes together, it's a, it's a cumulative effect on the plant growth promotion, as a result of which you get a very high yield and then in your hand you have million dollar profit. So that's the background. So again when you say soil health, soil is very very important. The health of the soil is very important because the plants rely on the soil and uh, the bacteria or the microbes that are present in the soil, they are the digestive system of the soil to digest the nutrients the unavailable nutrients to the plants are converted, digested, transformed into an available form in such a way that the plants uptake. And as a result of it, you get a very good growth. So the next friend of that is root health. So the root is very important for the healthy plant. If the roots are healthy, roots are proliferated, and the roots give more access for the association of the microbes along the roots root surface, as a result of which it gets a stable and strong, strong stems and the vegetation, the shoot. 
So that's the plant health. So you see.